Right, so this is the software lesson three, and today what we're considering is all about application software. Now, as you can see by my wonderful little diagram here, at the bottom we have the hardware, and in lesson one we talked about the operating system, and in this lesson we're going to talk about applications, which sit on top of the operating system, which allows you to communicate with the hardware, and backwards and forwards. Now, when we talk about application software, there are different types of application software. Now, when we look at this picture, we have six different companies. We have um, Mozilla, which is obviously the Firefox logo, and the Thunderbird logo. These are both pieces of software made by Mozilla. This is Android, which is also made by Google, which is this is Chrome. And we also have Linux. This guy is Linux, and his name is Tux, and he is the icon for Linux. And this last one is OpenOffice. Open Office. Now, the special thing about all, all of these icons is the fact that when they were written, they were written and the code that was used to make them was given to everybody. Now, this term is called Open Source. Meaning that the source code that they have was shared by absolutely to absolutely everybody, and anybody can write and update them. That's a really, really good thing, because obviously, then it means, if you know what you're doing, then it means anybody can update it, and anybody can come up with an idea that could improve the whole, the whole product. Linux is based entirely on that basis, and they have a lot of programmers who are dedicated to making that piece of, that operating system, Linux, better than what it is. Now, on the other side of it, there are companies out there to make money from software. And they're done, these are the, obviously, the Microsofts of the world. And any Microsoft software is also is known as proprietary software. And this basically means that um, they make money off it. So you have two different sides, you have proprietary and you have open source. And the idea is, is obviously, there is a massive ethical consideration, yeah? Is it right to give the stuff away, or is it right to charge? Microsoft owns it, Microsoft spends a lot of time working on it, so therefore Microsoft should make money out of it, surely. Whereas open source, they work on entirely on donations. Donations of time, and donations of money, and they make sense to make money from it. With proprietary software, it has to be licensed. So, if I buy a copy of Microsoft Office, it is licensed to that one machine and one person. I can buy different types of licenses. I can buy single user, single, I can buy multi-user. And of course, if I don't have a license, then I can quite freely come in there and be sued for it. Um, you can't see the source code for any Microsoft products. With open source, you can see anything. Right. The last bit we're going to talk about in this lesson, because this is quite a quick lesson, is we're going to talk about generic software versus open uh, bespoke software. So let me just fix my screen. Alright, now these are two very, very key terms. Generic software is off the shelf. And that means that obviously I can walk into PC World, if that's your choice, and I can go and buy it. And it, in, that, in that sense, it is cheap in relative terms. Okay? If I was to divide, buy some bespoke software, that means that it's programmer made. So it is made specifically for a company. So it's specific. But because I'm getting a very, very specific piece of software, it means that, of course, it is very, very expensive. 
expensive. But it is unique to the TU. If I was to take a piece of generic software, once I've bought it off the shelf, which is fairly cheap, I then make it do what I want. So I could take a database, if I could take a da generic database like Access, and then I could tailor it and make it into what I want it to do. So I could keep stock on it, but I would then have to make that myself. But it would, of course, then you'd need a programmer or somebody who can develop that, but it would be a lot cheaper than hiring a bespoke software company to do it. Examples of generic software are things like Adobe and um, Office. Obviously, we'll use Office. With Bespoke, there are no real examples because these are software companies making it. Okay. Right. So, this, so this is a very, very quick lesson, but it basically covers the different aspects of application software, the two different types, which are bespoke and generic software, the difference between proprietary software and open source software, and the ethical implications that, that are involved, and also the different types of open source software, just so that you can remember. The way I tend to remember for exams is I try and associate a keyword with an image or with a piece of software that I already know, and that way it helps me. Hopefully that helps.